Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On the Couch. I'm Adam Dupes. Uh, so, first off, I'm really late on this, uh, even though I saw it last Friday. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. The reason being is when I first saw it, I was actually still a little jaded because I walked in here expecting to hate this movie. I actually enjoyed it. Um, the reason why I said I was still jaded, I was still jaded after seeing this movie because eh, it was alright. But the more I think about it, the more I think about the cartoons, it wasn't bad. It really wasn't. It was actually pretty good. Um, the more I think about it, the more I realize I also enjoyed it more than I enjoyed 300. Because, um, because, well, I, God, why did, I guess it's because, uh, it was, it, it knew, it knew, it had no expectations is what I should say. There were no, there were no expectations for this movie, except that it was probably just going to be a cheap, um, a cheap way to a cheap way to make make money because also I saw a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, 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 the other movies based off of uh, the Rocky and Bullwinkle show like the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle uh, Dudley do right Georgia the jungle and granted now I have a soft spot for Georgia of the jungle I actually find it very charming the others I did not. I found them to be stupid and just piss poor interpretations or adaptations of of the cartoons. Here it actually works. There is charm to it. It does actually respect the cartoon while modernizing it, but they, it doesn't let the modernization get in the way. Um, the fact that uh, the fact that they put in pop culture references actually works. It really does work here. And I'm not a big fan of pop culture references at all, uh, except for a few, uh, as long as it works in the context. And here it does. Here it does. And I'll, and I'll go into some of the jokes uh, that, that helps make it work. Uh, the story is basically, uh, is basically Mr. Peabody adopts uh, Sherman. Now, in the, in the cartoon, the, uh, the, joke, the running joke is Mr. Peabody is a very smart dog who adopts a human boy as a pet that as a reverse role here it's more of a father-son relationship and it works this is like one of the things I had the biggest problem with when I first saw the trailers that they were treating it more as a father and son thing than an actual than a uh, master and pet thing but it actually works here because they're uh, because and I've come to realization is because it's a movie you can't have a joke that usually works for uh for an 11 minute cartoon worked for an hour and a half movie and this and that's what i've come to realize um plus but it also keeps the charm of the charm of that cartoon the humor of that cartoon kind of the kind of i, I want to say the social satire of that cart of the cartoon in a way uh but it also it's also somewhat educational they they do they don't treat its target audience as idiots. Hell, they don't in the cartoon Sherman's kind of an idiot in a way. He's not a very bright boy. Here he's a kid. He's not the smartest person, but he's actually intel he is someone intelligent. He knows his history because well, his dad uh, Mr. Peabody takes him takes him through time on on their time machine the way back. Um but yeah, it, but yeah, the plot is basically people, uh, Sherman gets in a fight with this girl played by Ariel Winter named Penny, who ends up being the, the kind of the unnecessary love interest in this movie, but I'll get to that in a minute. And, um, and what happens is uh, he gets in a fight, he bites her. And mostly because, mostly because Penny deserved it. Um, because she was being a bully, uh, which, by the way, I am very strongly against, but I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. Um, but, um, and so Child Protective Services comes in, and so Peabody has to try and 
make friends with Penny's parents and try to persuade the uh, child service agent that he is a capable father, despite being a dog. He is a capable father. Um, shenanigans ensues. Sherman and Penny go use the way back. They get into trouble, so Peabody and Sherman have to go and save Penny. Uh, to uh, and so their time traveling adventure happens. And what's great about it is they don't really throw in the uh, modernization in the in the uh, in the uh, car in the in the historical elements until later, actually. But it, but it works in that because in the end, all the historical figures go end up getting thrown into uh thrown into the present but and then they go back and they're all kind of modernized but it works because they were just exposed to our world uh, to our time period so it works there it makes sense there although except for one and this is uh patrick wardburn uh plays Agamem agamemnon uh who is the king if i'm if my greek history uh, is correct is the king of Sparta I believe uh, yes king of Sparta and uh, this was during the Battle of Troy and Trojan Horse when they get sucked into the into the present uh, like uh, you see in the trailer the French guy God, I can't remember his name now uh, gets tased which is actually funny it's funnier in the movie than it is in the trailer um, and he just says, don't tase me, bro. I think, the fuck would you know what tasing means? How, how would you know what that does? You would think it would be like magic or something, but, it, but no, it, uh, it doesn't. But it's Patrick Warburn, so I'm willing to let that slide. Which, by the way, little fat, little funny fact, um, Patrick Warburn was also in the Disney version of Under, uh, live action version of Underdog, which also is from, from the same creator as... Uh, as Rocky and Bullwinkle and uh, Peabody and Sherman, and it's also again really bad movie, but he's actually really funny in it. In it. But yeah, this movie is not bad. It, I actually did enjoy it. Um, uh, the humor is there. The there's even good adult humor in it. Uh, a few references that may, that is funny, and I'm not going to spoil a lot of them for you because because that the fact that you don't expect it is, uh, is what makes it funny. And it's not like just crude, stupid, crude humor. It actually is legitimate adult humor, kind of like what you would see in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, bleh, in Animaniac. Animaniacs is a prime example of good, subtle adult humor in a kid in a kids uh in a kids show or a kids movie same thing here there is good adult humor in the in this movie it's not stupid crude fart humors or uh complete set or stupid sexual blatant sexual jokes in a kids movie to make to get a cheap laugh this is a actually good adult humor uh that kids won't get until they're older but the parents will and either and and it will make them laugh. Um, uh, now, as for the uh, cast, besides, other than Patrick Warburton, uh, besides Patrick Warburton, everyone does a really good job. I am not a fan of celebrity. Like I said before in my Lego review, I am not a fan of celebrity voice casting. But it works here because really, really mostly because a lot of them are TV actors. And the uh, and the big Hollywood actors who are in this are probably going to be actors no one really knows unless you unless you watch mo uh, like better movies that people in like Stanley Tucci is Leonardo da Vinci, um, Mel Brooks is is uh, you know I'm not even going to tell you who Mel Brooks plays I'm just going to let you figure that one on your own because it is actually pretty funny. Um, but yeah, a and most of them are TV actors like Ariel Winter like, uh, as Penny and Ty Burrell as Peabody. P he's actually really good. The, his voice actually grew on me. 
um, as Peabody. It was because um, he's actually funny. I do like Modern Family. I think he's actually very, very funny in it, and it works here as well. Um, he does play someone who's actually very, very intelligent, but also a very caring father who's actually learning to be a father, uh, and that actually works in this. Um, uh, Stephen Colbert is also in it. Uh, playing Penny's father, and again, he's actually very funny. I wish I wish there was more of him, but uh, but there really isn't. But it again, it works. It really does work. Um, one one that one person that actually surprised me in this movie though is um, is the boy who plays Sherman. They actually casted a kid to play Sherman uh, named Max Charles. Um, if you don't know who he is, a lot of people won't, but he played like young Peter Parker in the recent Spider-Man movie, um, which could, and I have to say, good on, good on the studio's part for casting a kid instead of hiring like a, like a woman to play a kid, which is usually a norm because I'm um, despite, despite I mean, and no, and no insult to uh, female voice actors who can play uh, young children, because they can do it. Like Tara Strong is a good example. Where she plays like she can play characters like Timmy Turner and Fairly Odd Parents and whatnot. But I'm actually glad they picked a, an actual child to play this role because it because I think it does take despite besides good writing um, to to properly portray a child, it, but it should also take a child to portray a child. And that's, uh, and that's another thing, the writing's not bad in this. Um, the writing is actually very well paced. It's not convoluted, it's not, com it's not convoluted. The, the time traveling is actually very straightforward. It's, very, it's not convoluted because it knows its audience. It knows who's gonna watch it. It's, gonna, it's kids. kids. Kids aren't gonna fully understand the concept of time traveling. Or the theory of time traveling. Uh, it's not like Back to the Future where it got really, really confusing. But it's here. It's very straightforward. It's it's not. It, it's it's a line. It's not like a ball of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. Anyway, um, he he is a kid. He 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 is someone who has faults. He's someone who gets emotionally hurt or or just emotional in general someone who longs for uh for family and whatnot uh um a place uh, and a place in society he, he he's a kid he's a fucking kid um and and that's what and that's what i usually have problems with a lot of writers who don't get that who don't understand the mind of a child because when we grow up we start losing that you, losing that concept of what it means to be a kid, but uh, but kudos to them for actually taking the time to make this make Sherman a kid and not just an annoying piece of shit, which is another thing I was afraid of was they're gonna make Sherman an annoying as hell, and he's not. He's actually just he's a child, and that's really good. Um, Penny, like I said, he she's kind of the unnecessary love interest I felt like they didn't really need to have her but I'm and, it's, and one of the weird things about it was how the transitioning of their of hers and Sherman's relationship didn't feel right like it just went like they kind of skipped a scene or something they probably did but um um the it just didn't feel it didn't feel fluid or organic, I should say. Um, it was the like I said, there seemed they seem to have missed a scene because one moment she's still being a bitch, even in in like ancient Egypt, and then when they finally get to Italy, she's being nice. Now, granted, they show that she they were saving her life, but even still, it didn't feel automatic. It didn't feel completely organic in the transition of their relationship because all of a sudden even because even when and this isn't and this really isn't Penny's fault this is actually more Sherman's fault is that when they get to ancient Egypt he actually displays jealousy why 
this girl was actually very mean to him no matter what. And he and she actually forced him to use the way back to prove um, to help prove to prove something. And which a kid nor a kid would do is like tries to tell another kid prove this, and the kid will go go to great lengths to do it and make mistakes. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to automatically like that person who just forced you into doing something. Um, but but it didn't like bother me fully. It, it just it was just a slight kind of a slight nuisance that I quickly forgave afterwards because they didn't make it make her because in the end they didn't make her the girlfriend they just made her a good friend that could lead to a relationship um, and now for the biggest problem I have with this movie is like I mentioned there's a child's protective services agent plot line in this most unnecessary villain I have seen I have seen besides the raccoon and the nut job although this one was slightly better because they because she wasn't like the main plot line was she quickly did not she quickly did not become the main plot line they so and uh but I, I st it still bothered me it's when she was on screen was this woman really has it out for Mr. Peabody. Really, I don't understand why. They never really explain it. Like, they say, it's like, oh, you just think you're so much better than everyone else. You, you're you a dog. You should never, you can't adopt a child. It's like, well, apparently a judge thought, judge thought it was okay. But there was no reason. They don't really go into the backstory. I feel like there's more to her. There was more to her than, um, than what, um, what, the, uh, what they were telling us in this movie, like they they were they meant to give her a backstory, more of a backstory, but they but they just cut it for uh, the running time. Um, in all honesty, this movie still would have been fine. They still could have done all done the setup, the fight, everything, the whole big space time continuum thing. Even if they let left her out of the movie, if they just completely cut her out, it still would have been fine. The pacing would have been fine. They could have just left her out. Um, but they didn't. And, and like I said, she's a completely unnecessary villain. Um, one other thing I want to talk about is how... How really how respectful... I mean, of course, I can't, I can't say tell you how enough about how respectful this is to the to the source material they even put in one little tidbit which i which i not like i was hoping for because i really had no hope for this movie because i thought it was just going to completely shit on the cartoon but it didn't it actually did treat the source material with respect by adding the guy with the broom at the end uh at the end of the movie when it goes to the end He's sweeping. He, uh, I'm not going to tell you where he is, but he's just sweeping the floor, which works. I mean, which, which I'm glad for. Um, but other than that, um, other than that, uh, this movie was actually a very good surprise for me. I'm not going to say it's like as good as the Lego Movie, but it's still serviceable. I would recommend taking your kid if you're tired of seeing Frozen for the tenth time or Lego Movie for the up tenth time, which. I don't know why you would be, but yeah, go take your kid for to kill some time for an hour and a half. Uh, I will give, and this is a first and probably going to be very rare. Like I said, I enjoyed this more than 300. I give Peabody and Sherman a 7.5 out of 10. Um, it's very good, very respectable to the source material. Doesn't treat its target audience like idiots. Really go see this movie. Uh, if you can, I would recommend a matinee more than anything. All right, now for trailers. First, not looking forward to it. I mean, all the only thing I gotta say is, how did Planes make enough money to warrant a sequel? Um, Muppets Most Wanted. Uh, I got I gotta see the first one uh, before I see this, so I'm gonna try and do that this week. Uh, but yeah, I am looking forward to this because I am a big Muppets fan. I, I love the Muppets a lot. And uh, and after hearing good things about the first one, uh, which I will see, um, I'll, I'll, I'll have a review up for that one. Uh, I am looking, I 
am looking forward to this one next week. Uh, let's see. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2. I love the first one. I love How to Train Your Dragon. That movie was amazing. It was beautiful. It was very well acted. Espe again, especially with celebrity voice cast. But, uh, but it works because each one had a very distinct voice and character that made it work with each one. And here it's going to work again. Um, not to mention, it just looks epic. I mean, they are going all out with this one this time around. Uh, next one is Disney Nature's Bears. It's another, uh, it's another Disney Nature documentary. Which, why? I mean, it's the trailer just see, I see the same damn thing I see every single time they do, Disney does one of these documentaries. It's like, oh, Mother and her cubs going on a wonderful adventure, bring their kids in 3D. No interest at all. Un unless they decide to eat the eat the documentary crew, then I'll get then I'll get into it. All right. So bears, do your job. Um, trailer for Annie. This wasn't necessarily a bad trailer, and I'm not gonna get all upset because they cast a black girl to play Annie or Jamie Foxx to play Daddy Warbucks because I think he's actually a very good singer. I he's actually you know he's a real he's a really good he's a damn good singer. But I just feel like this is one of those unnecessary remakes. Because I I I mean I don't remember much about Annie, but I do remember slightly liking it. But I just saw no purpose to it. Because it is one of those movies everyone remembers. Everyone holds dear to. Uh, everyone, uh, like, it's one that you can watch over and over again. It's a classic. Um, and one thing that really kind of did it for me, though, was Cameron Diaz as Carol Burnett's character. Uh, originally, Sandra Bullock was supposed to be that character. This was serious miscasting on, my, on their part. Because this... What, uh, because I feel like Cameron Diaz is just really being nothing more than 40 year old Cameron Diaz she's still acting like she's 20 whereas Sandra Bullock would have would have been able to play someone really really mean someone really cruel I mean she I mean she did it in Crash she could do it here plus she is the right plus she acts her age anyway so so I would have been fine with that that dog's broken um, next is the box trolls, which I said in the nut job review, they showed a trailer, like a featurette trailer. Here they actually show an official trailer. I still do not know what the plot is, but fuck it. I'm still seeing it. It's from the guys that gave me, that gave us Coraline Paral Paranormal. I love those fucking movies. So yeah, I'm seeing it. Fuck yeah. Uh, last is Paddington the Bear. This was a surprise. <laughs> I mean, it's... I don't I, I really don't even know. Is it going to be live action or is it going to be CGI? I have no idea. But, wow, I was not expecting this. <laughs> I mean, you just see a burlap sack and all of a sudden the head of a... The head of, of, of a bear wearing a red rain... Of wearing a red rain hat and blue raincoat. I was like, oh shit. At, at least it's not at, at, at least it's not Teddy Ruxpin. If it was Teddy Ruxpin, I would have been out of that theater fast. I really would. <laughs> because, well, Teddy Ruxpin scares the shit out of me. Alright, so yeah, that that's all I gotta say about uh Peabody and Sherman. Uh I'm gonna watch Muppets when I can. Um, and, and put that up, uh, tomorrow I got Need for Speed, and I was gonna do, a uh, Single Wife's Club, but it's Tyler Perry, and I would rather, and I think, and I think jerking off to porn for two hours while taking a shit would, would be a more enjoyable movie than that goddamn thing, so, I'll see you guys tomorrow with, uh, or I'll, so, I'll see you next time with Need for Speed. Uh, and uh, the Muppets. So, bye.